Hello and welcome to The Imaging Wire Show. My name is Brian Casey, Managing Editor of The Imaging Wire. We've got a great episode for you today. Our topic is tools for making radiology workflow more efficient. And our guest is Ernest Montagna of Telemedicine Clinic, TMC of Barcelona. Ernest, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Brian. Pleasure. So if we could start with an introduction, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role at TMC? Yes, so I'm an AI project manager at TMC, which belongs to, <clears throat> to Unilabs, one of the largest diagnostic groups in uh, Europe in the world. And we have a department, the AI Center of Excellence, where what we try to do is identify great use cases for AI, uh, which solutions are out there in the market that can help our radiologists and pathologists work better. So we deploy uh, these kind of solutions after evaluating them, and we ensure that uh, they are delivering great value. Awesome. Now, um, our, our viewers are pretty familiar with the teleradiology market in the U.S., but can you can you talk a little bit about how teleradiology works in Europe and maybe how it's a little bit different? Yeah, uh, here the, uh, the radiology market is quite fragmented. Every country has their own local champions. And what TMC is doing is uh, reaching uh, to many different countries. We are really we, are, we have a lot of presence in the UK, in the Swedish and uh, Danish market, but of course we're always trying to look uh, how we can expand it to other markets as well. Yeah. And, and when was the company started? Uh, the company was founded in uh, 2002. Okay. And so um, is, are the needs for, for teleradiology in Europe kind of similar to the US in that maybe you've got some sites that um, need some some uh, overnight call and maybe some sites that maybe need a specialist. I mean, what are what are your customers looking for? Well, uh, first of all, that I think that we have a problem that it's the same everywhere in the world, right? The, the uh, scan volumes are increasing, but the, the number of radiologists is not increasing at the same level. So, of course, uh, the radiology is helping with that. But also, uh, how far we can reach with the radiology and delivering an expert uh, wherever it's needed. Uh, as an example, Greenland, right? Uh, in Greenland, uh, we are we are uh, also offering our services there. Uh, every small island that can send us an, an exam, we we can report it, and that's one of the aims of of the radiology, right? Making sure that the the expert uh, can can read a, a case coming from everywhere. Yeah. Are there any countries where you have a particularly large presence? Uh, in the UK and and Sweden. And how many radiologists do you have reading for TMC? Now I think it's more than 300. And, and uh, 300, wow. And how many exams a year is that? Well, uh, it's uh, both half a million exams per year now. Yeah. And it's a number that keeps increasing and increasing. Wow, wow. And, and, and where are your radiologists typically located? Are they reading from offices or are they reading from home? No. No, being at the radiology service, one of the great things that we can uh, give them is that they can report basically from wherever they want. So yeah, now uh, we also have an on-call service, which is mainly located in Australia. So when it's in the nighttime here, it's the daytime there. So they are always fresh, no odd hours for them to report. So they basically do the normal office hours while reporting the nighttime cases. Okay. Now, now how does the workflow typically work at TMC? How do, how do imaging studies come in and how are they routed to different radiologists? So uh, TMC, uh, we receive the uh, the exams directly from from the hospitals. They push them uh, using the, and DICOM nodes to us, and then depending on the exam type, we assign it to one of the uh, subspecialist radiology sections. We have the neuro section, the MSK section, and also the body section. And depending on the exam type, like for instance, uh, CR chest will go to body. Uh, it's assigned to one of those work lists. Then our capacity managers uh, with the uh, with the schedules of the of the radiologists and the current capacity that we have, then they assign the cases uh, to to the right specialist there. So obviously, you've got a lot of specialists that that specialize in in different types of cases. It's really important to route those to the correct people. Yep, and even even in the in this kind of group, there are also super specialists, right? Like radiologists that uh, read head and neck cases 
also uh, radiologists that in case there's a soft tissue tumor uh, that they report it as well. So yeah, there's um, there's a lot of room for being a subspecialist at BMC as well. Okay. So what are some of the challenges that TMC radiologists face? What are what kind of things do you, do they run into and do you run into in your job? Well, uh, one of the main challenges is that we have more than a hundred clients. So they are going to see cases coming from, you know, all different sorts of scanners, a lot of data variability, a lot of information variability, both on the format of the clinical referrals and also the, um, the studies and shares description. So yeah, they basically have to be ready to, to, to see, uh, scans coming from all kinds of sites different qualities. So yeah, it's a lot of data variability. Yes. Yeah. And, and and when did you and the, the rest of the staff at TMC realize that, that efficiency was an issue that you needed to address? Well, uh, I mean, that that's always one of the targets, right? To how can we become more efficient? And uh, we found out that there were several tasks not related directly to reporting or reading the images that uh, that should be more efficient. We, we did a shadowing project where a few project managers stayed in very close contact with the, with the radiologist. They were monitoring their activities while reporting, and then they identified a few aspects that uh, that need to be more efficient. Like, and one of them, for instance, is uh, the, the hanging protocols. Hmm. What was the issue with hanging protocols? Well, as I said, uh, we have uh, more than 100 clients. Each of those 100 clients are sending the study description and series description in any format uh, that they normally use. And of course, we cannot really impose on them that, okay, like send the CR chest cases, read them uh, like the CR chest, don't, don't change it. So of course, um, if you want to make the hanging protocols work, one of the things that you really need is to have a consistent uh, data form. Yeah, and with our current setup, we, can, we can't, uh, we can ha- we can have it. So we we need to to have other uh, standard format. So so basically to to kind of recap a little bit, you've got hundred clients all across Europe and in different countries and different languages and different healthcare systems, and they're sending you these studies, and they're they're all coming in in all these different formats. I mean that had to be that kind of crazy making. Yes, uh, because it's not only that they come in different formats, but from time to time there are errors or they're even blank. So imagine how can you assign a case to a subspecialist radiologist if, if you don't even know what's in the case. Wow. So you turned to Enlytic for a solution to this issue. And when did you start working with them? I think the first conversation started in uh, 2019 with a few uh, with a few uh, test cases and a few discussions on how this could fit in our workflow. But the project officially started in uh, 2021. Okay. And so you were working with their Curie Index product, correct? Mm-hmm. That's correct, yes. And can you talk a little bit about that and what it does? Uh, what uh, what the Curie platform and what Index does for us is um, standardizing study and series description. So now uh, what we do is uh, before a case reaches our packs, uh, we send it to the analytic solution and we uh, transform the study and series descriptions into an index format but, and then the box. So they're able to take this fire hose of all these different kinds of data. It goes through the uh, the index engine and it sort of spits it out in, in a format that's standardized the way that you guys would like to see it. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. C- can you walk us through how an image might be processed by index and, and how that might work differently than what you experienced previously? Well, uh, these images, first of all, they are pushed using the, from the clients, using the DICOM nodes for us. We intercept the image in traffic uh, in a DICOM node, and then we reroute it to analytic. We wait until it's processed, and then we receive back from them uh, sites and shares description that have been standardized, and then uh, into the back it goes. Uh, and once they are in the box, uh, the radiologist can access, can access them, and Basically, they don't see any difference because the data remains the same. However, it's much more comfortable for them to read the contents of the exams of the studies and series descriptions because now they don't need to worry about missing or incorrect information. They they know what they're going to get because it's always going to follow the same format. And, and has has your use of Curie Index impacted the percentage of TMC radiologists that are using the hanging protocols now? 
Yes. Uh, in the beginning, uh, before we started rolling out the uh, index, there were, I think, like 10 or 15 radiologists that were using the display protocols. Because, uh, as I said, we have so much data variability that if we really wanted one radiologist from the UK to use display protocols efficiently, these radiologists will need to configure the display protocols one by one per each client to take care of all this uh, variability. That's a lot of work for a radiologist and for a PAX admin. So now after we uh, we reached a certain volume of cases processed by index being standardized, we pushed, uh, we did a communication push uh, for our radiologists and now we've gone from uh, like a 10% of all the section using this, um, these display protocols to more than 70. And still radiologists need to keep their preferred setup. They are configuring the display protocols themselves and they basically don't need a lot of assistance now it's much easier to do it so the radiologist doesn't have to change how they work no no uh really we are we are helping them uh configure their preferred display protocols and they are, we are not forcing them to read in a certain manner they simply now have the tools to configure them easily wow now what sort of feedback are you getting from your radiologist about uh, curie index overall good overall um of course, and from time to time, there are some standardizations that are not 100% correct. But overall, now they are more uh, they, they are happier using the display protocols because now they are finally starting to see some uh, consistent performance. Do you feel that uh, they're more efficient now, and are, are they? And how? What's the result of that efficiency? Are uh, are, are ra your radiologist able to read more studies per day? Well, uh, what we know for sure is that since we started deploying, uh, we are seeing a 10% efficiency increase for those radiologists that are using the display protocol, meaning that they are reading 10% faster. And why is that? Because now once they have configured the display protocols, uh, they don't need to spend the extra minute dragging and dropping the series on screen. However, this data, and, and I have to be 100% transparent, is quite difficult to measure. There's a lot of factors here that we, we need to take into account. And um, but the first indication is pretty good. That's why we are going to uh, spend more time looking into this data because we have a good lead uh, indicating that this that this is really uh, helping us. And now we want to we want to get the most out of this data analysis. Great. So Ernest, I guess you have some slides that uh, you want to share with us that kind of shows us a little bit about how Curie Index works and the impact that it's had on operations at TMC. You want to go ahead and pull those up. Yeah, I wanted to give you a uh, just real live examples from us, right? Uh, where where you can see uh, how the situation was uh, was before uh, before the standardizer. What you can see here, <coughs> these are real site descriptions for uh, MR braids, right? So uh, some you can see that uh, that uh, it's it's super heterogeneous. Uh, the modality is not there. Uh, you know, there are me many missing um, components, like a contrast. Sometimes you don't even know what's in there, like incidental F. What does that mean? I have no idea. I will need to open the exam before I get to read the, before I get to know what's inside. So each one of these, um, each one of these uh, hospitals would be one of your clients, and yep. the na the names that we're seeing are are maybe how they are sending. The, the, this is the actual text that they're using to send their images to you. Exactly. Yeah. So now, after we run all this uh, in the in the platform, in the index platform, this one we're getting MR brain non con. All of that that I shown before were MR brains without any, without contrast. So now it's much easier for us, first of all, to understand okay, what is it that we are getting, and then for our radiologists to also understand it and configure display protocols accordingly. So it's just it's completely uniform. Every one of these studies has the same uh, description. Cool. So, um, I mean, how has it made your job easier? Well, uh, not my job directly because I haven't been the, the, the project manager, but uh, the PAX admin job is now much, much easier because uh, uh, Maria, our PAX admin now, doesn't need to worry that much about um, configuring one display protocol per client, per, um, per radiologist. Now, we, uh, when they don't work, uh, now it's much easier to fix. Also, uh, the amount of times it doesn't work uh, has been really re reduced. Now we get uh, much fewer complaints from the radiologists that display protocols don't work. And 
<laughs> what's more important for us is that now radiologists are finally have some encouragement to use them because now they know that they, they work much better. Hmm. Now, you're planning to write a paper on your experiences with Curie Index. How is that going? Yeah, well, uh, we, are, we are finishing the, the last uh, contractual items, but we have an agreement both with Analytic and uh, Erasmus Medical Center where we are going to share uh, data that we have collected uh, from our uh, efficiency re for um, our efficiency reporting because we are tracking all the reading time from our radiologists. But also quite important is that also we're going to uh, put a number on how well is a standardizer doing the, the standardization task. We are going to analyze um, more than 1,000 samples from our most common uh, image protocols, and we are going to see how accurate our uh, index is doing these transformations. So it's going to be an all-rounded uh, study with efficiency and uh, other performance. Great. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that. Um, do you think that your experiences with, with Curie Index at TMC would also apply to other facilities either in, in Europe or the U.S. or other countries? I think so. I think that any radiology service that has no control over what kind of information they're getting from the clients uh, could benefit from this. There's, uh, there's a lot to be gained. Yeah. Do you have any advice for those facilities that are looking to standardize data like this? Well, um, I will say that... Uh, if you if you're really thinking of solving the display protocol uh, problem, analytic is, is is the way to go, and uh, you're gonna realize that uh, the deployment can be can be complex. There's a lot of technical challenge to be core, but it's totally worth it because this, the analytic has a fantastic team, and they are gonna be super responsive and they are gonna walk you through the whole process of deploying successfully. Awesome, that sounds great. Well, Ernest, thanks so much for being with us today. Thanks for sharing your experiences. Um, and uh, it's been great talking to you. Yep. Thank you. A pleasure. All right. So I'd like to thank our audience for joining us today. Thanks to Ernest Montagna of TMC for being with us. Signing off for the Imaging Wire, my name is Brian Casey. <laughs>